In today's tutorial, we're going to work on the hands full crochet mittens. The title of this video is the size that we're going to be working on today. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this beautiful pattern. This is called the Hands Full Crochet Mittens. Comes in three sizes and in the starting of today's video I'm just going to do a quick uh, pattern review and then we're going to jump to the size that's indicated in the video title. So all of the intros are going to be the same for all three sizes because we have to go and look at everything that is the same with each one of the sizes but then once we actually do the stitch work we're going to then look at each individual size and work our way throughout this pattern. So let's do a quick pattern review. So in today's pattern it comes in many different sizes. We have all the way from 2 to 4, 8 to 10 and then adult and it's a mathematical calculation based on the growth of your hands. So you're going to notice that there's colors. So we have like a fuchsia, yellow and a green here. So anytime there's a decision to be made we can see that in the pattern here which I'll explain. So one ball of Karen, one pounder can make eight pairs of mittens for the young or uh, the smallest size two to four can make six pairs of mittens for the next size up eight to ten years old and it can make four pairs of mittens for the adult size just like this. So that's kind of a neat thing. So you Most of the new patterns by Yarnspirations.com has a color code and you can see two, uh, two to four 8 to 10 and add it and you see that this is the size. So all of the instructions are provided with that. So whenever you see a bracket like this, so if you're working on for example, let's say we're going to do the 8 to 10 years, we're going to say with the main color, MC is main color and you can see that in the description, is that you have to chain 12. Okay, do you see that? So every time you're going to make a decision. So what I would do if I were you and you or me, every time a decision needs to be made I would go through the pattern in advance and go and look at it. So anytime there's a, a dimension, so for example it says you need to keep working until it's five inches based on that size and again you're looking for the color codes. So when there's no color codes in, in a set of instructions just like you see here, you just follow it as it says. So some of the instructions when we see these in other patterns is that there are is no color code because that's just what it means. So let's uh, look up here real quick and it says work the number of single crochets evenly around. So for the 8 to 10 years it's 22 and then you just keep on going. So round number 2 here there is no uh, color coding at all. So this is the same instruction for all of the sizes and then it says repeat the second round and then you see 1, 1 or 2. Again look at the color code for you to be able to do that. So this is a really neat pattern and it's really not hard to do and I made a note that the tails are on the left. So let me tell you a little bit about that because this is about understanding where to stop when you're doing the cuff area. So here's the smallest size cuff that we have and this is for the two to four years of size and I had to work in advance to get this done. So you'll see where this is here. See this tail? You want to finish and you're opposite to it just like this. Okay? So that when you go to start the next round or the next set of instructions it will appear like this. Okay? So you're gonna start on the right side here and the tail is over here right on this side. So you just want to pay attention to that and what I would do if you were me and I were you, I would get two balls of Karen one pounder and do the cuffs at the same time without fastening this off and then just do them so that the fact is is that you can lay this cuff over top of another cuff and get them done. So I would really uh, be interested in doing that. So here is the size that we have uh, for the, the two to four years and what's gonna happen with this cuff is that we're gonna turn it in order to make it. So if you lay the cuffs on top of each other like I did here you will be guaranteed that your cuffs will be the same size. Again that's a personal choice that's up to you. So just out of interest I have to work ahead of time when I do a tutorial. So I did all the cuffs in advance and I'll show you how to do the cuffs. They're really quite easy. So this is the two to four euros of size and this is the eight to ten and this is the adult. So by the time you flip it up and fold it you can see what the wrist size is for the difference. So you can see when you fold these that they're much different than each other when you go to do it. So this is how I did it and it was just uh, made it a lot easier. So if I was to do a second pair I would actually do the cuff again with another ball of yarn and then I would lay it over top make sure that they match completely so that you are guaranteed that the cuff is the same size. Again that's completely up to you. So without further ado you need a four and a half millimeter US size 11 or sorry US size 7 and what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be working on the pattern that's indicated in the video tutorial today. So let's move on. So let's begin today's tutorial. We're going to work on the cuff and this is going to be two to four years of age and you're going to need a ball of Karen one pounder for this. 
Okay, so for the adult size, we need a total of a seven inches from here to here and look where this tail is right now and look where I ended. You'll see that it's diagonal to each other and that indicates to me that I have completed it properly. So what we need to do is that we need to seal it around so your wrists will actually go in. I'm an adult size so this will not um, be like completely loose on you so when you go to do it, it's gonna have stretch to it so that you can stop that snow from going on the inside of your mittens. So what you wanna do is just put the um, yarn, <laughs> put your hook back into the loop here and what I want you to do is just fold it in a way that you can just sandwich it together and what we're gonna do is that on this side here we're gonna go continue in the back loops to create those ridges but in this side we're gonna go in the foundation chain which is going to have two strands here because of the way that I showed you. So let's begin. We're just gonna go into, we're not gonna chain one, we're just gonna go into a back loop only, one side and then go into the foundation chain on the other and I want you to slip stitch so just pulling it through there and there. Okay, so on this first one here that you see just go into the back loop only and then on the foundation one in the back going through both loops and pull through and through. So okay, so back loop and then the foundation chain or the foundation that you're gonna work with. So because you are watching your counts all the way through, these stitches will completely match each other as you work yourself all the way down. So you should not have any extra stitches left and you should not run out of any as well as you go along. So just joining your cuff together. So by doing it this way, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna look like it's staying in balance of the pattern to create the final look for when you're going to wear it. So you'll barely notice which side is actually your seam side when you're going to wear this thing. So I have two more left. Just got this one here and then I got the outside one here. So going in and then across. So I'm just gonna turn my work so now that I can see it here so it's gonna face up and then what I'm gonna do now is work my way around the top of this brim here. So let's talk about that. So let's work my way around the brim. Here is the loose end here that you had the starting and what I would recommend for you is trapping it into position as you go. So what we have to do is equally get 28 single crochets around this and so when it's 28 by the time you get halfway around you should be at 14 and then 14 on the way back. So just use that halfway point as a kind of a gauge measure of just trying to get your 28 in. If your cuffs are slightly different uh, if you've added an extra row just by maintaining 28 you'll have them both the same size for from this point forward. So uh, what we want to do is start up. We're gonna chain up one first and then going on these sides you want to count 28. So let's uh, begin the first one. So that was one and these are just single crochets and you got two leaving this straggler down on top. So you got three and four and five, six, seven, eight, nine and I'm gonna let that straggler fall into the inside and I'll get rid of that later. So that was nine. So we want 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Remember what I said, 14 should be about the halfway point. So tilt it back up. This is where I started here. This is 14. So I can see that I've gone uh, virtually halfway around. So let's continue along. So I'm gonna say 15 and 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. So that got me all the way around. I just eyed it out to make it work and then once you get your 28 in, just join it with a slip stitch to the beginning one that you did. So now you have your rim going all the way around and now let's continue along in today's pattern. So the next three rounds are gonna be identical to each other. They're all gonna be half double crochet rounds. So we're gonna chain up two. Does not count as anything. It's more of a builder. So you come into the same stitch underneath and you're just going to apply one half double crochet into each stitch going all the way around. 
So I'm gonna show you how to just slip stitch and, and build to the next one but you got three rows or three rounds in order to do this particular part of the pattern. So please do three rounds and I'll see you back at the end of this round just to review on how to slip stitch to work your way up. When you get all the way back around I just have one more stitch. It looks like that there's two but there's only one and I just wanna show you this. So this last one over here, see how it leans into here? That is not a stitch. That's part of that. So a lot of people think it is and then they keep adding extra stitches and by the time they do it, it ends up turning into a bell and not continue to straight straight up. So once you get the last one in, just slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet. So now you're just gonna continue to build again. So one, two, okay, going into the same first stitch again and I need you to do two more round, uh, rounds of this. So just half double crochet in each. So this will give you a total of three rounds starting from the cuff of just regular half double crochets going around. So please do that for this round and next round and I'll see you at that, that point and then we're gonna start working on uh, other things. So right now I've just finished my three rounds that I had. So one, two, and three, you can see those there. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna carry on and now we're gonna make room for the thumb. So we have to make room for this area of your thumb before you can do a hole and this is what we're gonna build up here. So what we have to do is that you're gonna see that there's a slip stitch line. This stays towards the outside of the mitt just like you see here and so then that just gives you an indication of where that is. So it's not actually in the middle of the mitt if you're wearing it and it won't appear on top if you're if people are seeing that. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna do what is called the shape the thumb gusset next and this is really easy and we're gonna do four rounds in order to do this. So let's begin by chaining two. Doesn't count as a double half double crochet. It's just a builder and I need you to half double crochet in the next 13 which includes that first one. So let's go one and we're gonna do 13 and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So now that you got your 13 in, the next two, and you can double count that if you want to, the next two are gonna be two half double crochets in each. So you put two in the first one and two in the next one. So you don't need to count all the ones going all the way back to the starting but all you just have to do now is just all the rest of the stitches that remain, just one half double crochet each to the, to the where you started and then just join it with the slip stitch and I'll see you there in just a moment. Okay, I'm now back to where I started and now let's begin round number two. So round number two, we're gonna chain up two again and right where we are starting here in the next uh, 13 have to be half double crochets again. So let's do that. So we got one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So now that I got my 13, you can double count if you want to and then the next one is gonna be two half double crochets into the same one and then the next two are gonna be by themselves. So there'll be one half double crochet in each of the next two and then the next one is two into the same one. So this is round number two. Once you get that done, it's just a regular half double crochet all the way back to where you had started. Join it with the slip stitch and then I'll start you on round number three. So let's begin round number three. We're gonna chain up two and so this time it's going to be 13 again of half double crochets in a row. So let's count those up together. So one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So this time around the next one is gonna get two half double crochets. So put two into that one and then the next four are by themselves. So let's do that. So one, two, and three, four, and then the next one is two into the same one. So that completes that one and so it's just regular half double crochets now back to the beginning. Do your slip stitch and then I'll see you for one more round of shaping and I will see you there in just a moment. 
So for the adult size we're gonna do one more round of this and then we're going to move on. It's the only one of the sizes that has this additional fourth round for shaping for the thumb gusset area. So we're gonna chain up uh, two and then it's going to be a half double crochet in each of the next 13. So let's count those out. So we got one, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So right where I am right now the next one is gonna be two half double crochets into the same one and now there's gonna be six half double crochets by themselves. So let's try that. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then the next two are going to be the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So one and two. So the remaining ones now of this round is just one half double crochet in each and join it with the slip stitch and I'll see you back here. We're gonna then start doing the next part of this mitten. So in this part of the tutorial you can see that the one side's been gaining out. So you see it's just making room for your thumb area when you go to wear it. Okay, so that's all that we're doing here. So it appears only on this side. So even if it's right or left, see, it doesn't matter. So let's uh, begin. We're going to need a stitch marker now for the next part of today's tutorial. And just grab a, a spare piece of string. We're gonna use that as a marking point in order to create this. So what we need to do for this round is that we need to place that marker into position plus create the thumb knit uh, hole that's gonna happen. So let's begin. We're going to chain up two. And what we're gonna do is 14 half double crochets in a row. So coming straight down into the first one. So let's count 14 out together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, and 13, and 14. So we got 14 here. So now we have to chain two and watch what I'm gonna do. So chain two and in the second chain which is this, this one right here I want you to grab that marker and I want you just to place it in there. It's just a holding point so that you know where to start when you go to do the thumb area of this mitten. And I would tuck most of it inside the mitten to keep it out of your way. Okay, if you have an extra long string like I just did. So now what we have to do is that we have to come back down on top of this and start skipping stitches. So we have to skip eight in a row. So go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and go to the ninth and I want you to half double crochet into the ninth one. So this is gonna jump a whole whack of stitches to create that opening for the thumb. And there is your thumb right there. So now the remaining of the stitches going all the way around it's just gonna be one half double crochet. Please do that and join it with a slip stitch and then I'll start you up on the next round. Okay so I've just joined it and now you can see the thumb is here. So what we're gonna do here is that in this area here we're gonna strengthen this up this time around. So we're going to begin this round and we're gonna chain two. Again counts as nothing it's just a builder and then coming into the same stitch. And I need you to do 14 in a row and once you see how this is done you, you don't have to count it if you're gonna do a second one. So you're gonna say one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, and 14. And look where you are. This is why you don't probably have to count it the second time you do it. You're right on that, that chain aren't you? So there's no more stitches left here. So what we have to do is in the first chain we have to half double crochet. The second chain is where that stitch marker is and you wanna get two strands on top just like you did with the first chain. And those are your two half double crochets in on that chain and then you start again on the outside here of going the remaining all the way around back to the start. So you've just strengthened in that area 
right there with the thumb area. So just coming back all the way around then just do half double crochet uh, one into each and then join it with a slip stitch and then I'll see you back on the next round. So I just finished this round now and now the remaining rounds that we have to do we have to get a tape measure out for that and we have to go a total of six inches from the cuff. So right where the cuff starts here we have to go another area until we get to six. So all we're just gonna do for the remaining of these rounds is just two more inches is that it's half double crochet once in each all the way around it until you get to this measures of six inches. So please do that. So let's get started on that and then I'm gonna leave that for you and then we're gonna start shaping the top. So as a quick review you chain up two and it's just one half double crochet in each all the way around and just join it with a slip stitch and continue to do that until you get your six inches that you need from the cuff. And I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm back and now I have my six inches done from the top of the cuff to where I am. So that's what that is. So let's uh, begin to start shaping the top. So we're gonna now create a nice rounded top. So to do this what we're gonna do then is um, shaping the top we're gonna chain two doesn't count as anything and we are going to put in three half double crochets in a row. So let's do that. So one and two and three. So now the next two are gonna be together. So just gonna wrap the hook going in, pull through, wrap the hook going into the next one, pull through. You got five loops on the hook, pull through all five. So two just became one to get our just became one stitch. So that's half double crochet two together. So the repeat pattern going all the way around then is going to be three halves by themselves, three half double crochets, and then the next two are together. So wrap into the next one, pull through, hold, wrap, next one, pull through and hold, and then wrap and pull through all five loops. Please do that all the way around. So in keeping my counts proper I'm just looking for it and I'm keeping my stitch counts uh, the same and the final two stitches are going to be two together. Okay and I haven't done anything special that just happens to be how it works out and that means that I'm in the right, the right uh, step there. So let's begin round number two of shaping the top. So we're gonna chain up two which doesn't count as anything and we're gonna half double crochet into the next two. So go one and two and then it's gonna be two together again. So the next two are gonna be together. Okay and then again two in a row. So one and two and then the next two are together. Please do that same pattern going all the way around. So I'm coming all the way back around and just joining it with the slip stitch to the top. So now I want to start the next round and this is in the adult one only only the, the eight to ten years of age and the adult is doing this round. So let's uh, begin this one and we're gonna chain up two and it says one half double crochet into the next one. So this is the same one below and then the next one is two together. So the next two are together. So this is really gonna compress this uh, for this size. Okay so the next one is gonna be one by itself and then the next two are together. Please do that same idea going all the way around. So the last two stitches on this uh, last one here was just two together because I'm keeping them in the right count and that's it. So I'm just going to join with a slip stitch. So now you're left with the small hole that's in the top. So what I want you to do is just cut this strand long enough that you can use a darning needle and you want to pull it through that loop and what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed a darning needle onto there and we're gonna weave that in and pull that shut. It's like pulling a top of a hat shut. So just do that and like a whip stitch just going in and out of the stitches. So just going and just go one into each all the way around. So it's not a massive hole but it's, it's obviously too big for you to, to settle with that and just say that it's okay. So you're just gonna keep going and then what you're gonna do at the end when I get it all done is that I'm gonna pull it all and it all should collapse all into the center which creates that rounded look at the top of the, of the mitten. So now I think I'm good so I'm just gonna hold it and I'm gonna pull. See everything just came together. So I'm just gonna go diagonally across just to make sure I get it and it goes right across and then I'm just gonna go in across the other way. So in order to do this then you're gonna have to just tie a really small little just a, a knot. So just going in and then just feed it through the loop. Just pull it nice and 
and what I want to do is that just go in and out of the stitches three times from that point. So now that you've done that, so go one and then glide it through a different spot in the other direction for two and glide it back in the other direction for three. Your project can never stretch three ways at one time, therefore this will never fall out. So now you can just trim it right down to the project and that's done. So what's left to do? Well we have the mitten and we have a thumb to do. So you have a nice rounded edge and now you got a thumb. So actually I can put my hand in here, it's the adult size, just like so. My fingers are actually right on the edge right here and so now I just have to finish doing the thumb. This is actually really cool. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So let's begin and I'm gonna create a slip knot to begin and put it onto my hook. So let's just do this, it's upside down, the top is facing me and the cuff is away from me. And see this, where this uh, place marker is? That's where we wanna start. So we want to go right into that stitch where it is. Okay, that was that chain if you remember. I can pull this out now because my hook's in there holding it. And I can just fasten this on with a slip stitch, just like this. Chain two, doesn't count as anything. So you had that one plus its friend of another chain right beside it. And so you're gonna go into that one right beside it for half double crochet. So now what you wanna do is that you wanna be conscientious of where you're going here. So you have eight half double, or half double crochets that were empty right here. The problem is, and this is not per the pattern, but this is per my own tip here. This is why we do tutorial work. And what I want you to do is that I want you to put the first one here and this one together. This one doesn't count as anything but you'll end up with a gap in your in your mitt. So you're gonna wrap the hook first and going into the side of that stitch, pull through and hold, then go into the first one. So wrap and going into the first one right here. And so you'll have five loops on the hook, pull through all five like that. So what this is doing is it's closing off that gapping space that would normally we, we would be there. You see that kind of in socks too. So now you're just gonna continue to half double crochet across. Okay, you're gonna have a total of 10 half double crochets in the round after you're done this. And what I want you to do is that I wanna pay attention to that last one that you're gonna do because I want you to put two together in that last one as well. Okay, so here we go. So here's the last one right here. Okay, so you're gonna go into that one, pull through. You're gonna go into the side of this one, pull through and then pull through all five loops and you're done. Okay, so that just closed off everything and now you just gotta just go to the top of the first half double crochet just to slip stitch it to bring it all together as one like that. So let's uh, continue in doing another round. So now you're just gonna continue to go in a round and it says to have the thumb length of one and, a, and three quarters right from where you started. So I started right here as I can see so I want this to be one and three quarters. So I'm gonna chain up two, doesn't count as anything and I want to half double crochet into each stitch going all the way around. And I wanna continue to do that until I get to my one and three quarter length. So just watching where I'm putting everything. There's a total of 10 stitches going all the way around on this thumb. So you'll have to turn your, th uh, your mitten as you do this in order to get it all to work. Okay, so uh, do that and then I'll see you back here in just a moment. So slip stitch to the beginning and then keep building up until it's one and three quarters. So once you get to one and three quarters, you can try it on and let me just show you. So these are left or right, it doesn't matter because the thumb is right on the side. And you can see that just the tip of my thumb is hanging out at the end. Okay, so there's no doctoring of this pattern here. My hands are stretched out on the inside. So my worst nightmare would be that this thumb would be way too long or it'd be too short. So I wanna make sure that it's right and if you follow the measurements it should be right anyway because it's an average size of, of a person's hand. So let's uh, begin the final uh, round here and we're just going to chain up uh, uh, two doesn't count as anything but we're gonna put everything, every two together. So we're just gonna go into the first one and the next one, put those two together and we just keep doing that all the way around. Now because there was 10 stitches, you're gonna do this a total of five times as it states and then you're gonna do what we did with the top of the mitten of gathering the stitches and then pulling it together for the very end uh, piece. So just going all the way around of putting two together. Okay, the final two stitches are here. And we're just going to attach to the very beginning. 
I don't wanna ever go into a gap space. You always wanna go into chains because the chains don't open up like gap spaces. So now you want to trim this yarn up enough that you can put a darning needle into it. Pull this out. So that locks it. And then you're just gonna be left with a very tiny hole at the top. So you wanna do a good job with that because it's your own fingers. <laughs> you'll, you'll have a numb thumb. <laughs> so you're gonna just go across your work. Just go across. This is how I would do a top of a hat. Just going across and just bringing those edges together at the very top and it closes off the top of that hole. Just like so. And then once you're satisfied with it, just run it through one loop like that and that will tie itself onto it. And then go in and out of the project three times back and forth. So one, going into a different spot for two, going into a different spot, coming the other way for three. You can't stretch a project three ways. It just is impossible. So therefore you can cut it right down to the project on the outside, you'll never see it. So therefore you have a glove now you can just fit your hand into. And so this would be my uh, left glove, I guess you can say. <laughs> or you could be your right glove, it doesn't matter. It's not been designed for left or right, they match each, each other. So that's it for now, enjoy your new mitts and have a great day. We'll see you again real soon, bye bye.